Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Richard Clark of Wushu Richard. I'd like to welcome anybody if you are new to my channel and welcome. I focus mainly on martial arts and kung fu videos as well as some short movies which I put out too uh, for entertainment purposes. I hope that um, you will find my, my channel both educational as well as entertaining. I focus mainly on martial arts training, but as I say, I also focus on short, fun movies. I am also a deep philosopher and deep thinker. Um, I want to uh, welcome you to this series here. I'm calling this Truth Debate. Okay, Welcome to this episode, the first episode of Truth Debate. What are the topics on for discussion tonight then. The first discussion is a very fun one and I do believe that I have come up with the with a a reasonable possible conclusion to this long long debated question. What came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, what I think, okay, is this. Sometimes the problem is, that, that's the first topic, okay, we're going to talk about. And we're going to, this is going to take us on to other topics too, which is a very funny thing, really, for this first topic to bring us on to other deeper topics. But each topic needs to be looked at, you know, separately. And I think the problem with humans, okay, us people, we we are always asking questions and thinking of things and we always forget that the only way that we can conceive ideas and think of things of any think up anything and visualize our world the problems we come up against on a daily um, basis and all of our emotions we seem to forget that all of that comes from one thing the human perspective okay the human perspective, okay, um, now, we're always trying to compare, we're always trying to say, okay, what came first, what came uh, last, organise things into an order that we think, at least, we can understand. Um, we're trying to give reasons and answers to questions, forgetting that the questions were put forth by us in the first place. People who are not, you know, um, living, we are beings that do not hold every answer because there is no infinite answer to the infinite you know question mark or ongoing ever expanding um, you know of time and space you know question mark um, I'm not trying to be wise, um, as so I'm trying to be wise, but I'm not trying to come across in my videos as like, um, I'm, I think I'm so wise and I think I've got the final answer, no. Mm, human beings can discuss, they can share their points of view, can communicate, we can communicate with each other, we can um, debate, and, um, but ultimately it's not about proving points, or understanding one another, even on an emotional level. Uh, this is where I believe all beliefs, okay, are the same thing. It's just a way of seeing things through your developed way of thinking through your mind, and then uh, reflect that is reflecting off of your everything you perceive of the world around you from your uh, five senses and experiences, and um, it, it, it goes pretty deep. You know, on a psychological level, mental, spiritual, if you want to call it that, and the physical, scientific, all of those truths, okay? Um, whatever your belief is, then it will be true to you. And, if, and beliefs can make things possibly unbelievable, the uh, incredible possible, the unbelievable possible. You can actually do things, but, um, amazing things, if you have a strong enough belief in it. It likes what you make it, and, and then it's how you see it, okay? But we all see things slightly different. Some people um, who have um, similar si um, ways of seeing things all connect up together because it fits within their culture or within their group, how can I say, um, 
they're, um, I can only put it in that way, humans group themselves, you know, <coughs> group, and, uh, and um, you know, some uh, who share like similar ways of thinking. For example, um, a group of people who will have been, let's say, captured and tortured or beaten, it could be, um, you know, or, or be, those people with, um, or people that may have lost a family member like, um, who may have been fighting in a war, let's say, then those people will get, definitely get together because they can relate to one another. And, um, you know, so it's about relating to what we believe, you know, trying to connect with each other. So that's a natural um, trait of humans, okay? Uh, um, now, um, so we are very advanced beings, okay? We are, um, and um, I'm a philosopher, and I'm a deep thinker myself, and uh, that's all I, I'm going to say to you here. So, what came first, as I see it, okay, from the chicken and the egg. I think it's a very stupid, and um, sorry, to, sorry to put this across, but it's a very simple question, and it can only come from a human mind, it seems, okay? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Does it mean that whenever we get a question like that, that becomes so difficult, no matter on which scale, but it seems so difficult? Does it mean that we, we should shut off this and, and don't think about it? No, um, it's it, it's all it's all relative. But this is no different. Studying, you know, that could be no different to studying the absolute origins of the universe, space, and whatever. It doesn't matter what your if it's a, from a religious point of view, a scientific, or whatever point of view you may have, or mixed, you know, points of view rolled into one, whatever. It's just the way you see things, and sometimes you can think, 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 and think. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. Well, I knew it. Well, I'm glad we're here. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. Um, I'm not trying to say that we should not be thinking about anything because ultimately you'll never, you'll never come to a conclusion so that uh, it's, no, it's not worth thinking. But all I'm saying is thinking is practicing your own thought patterns. Um, it should be to improve yourself, to learn to control yourself better in a way that will hopefully do good uh, for you and the world around you, you know, in, in a moral point of view, that you can live a moral life and, and do good, with, you know, communicate with your fellow other humans and, you know, put good out into the world and make life, make everything you do more efficient towards living a better life and in the flow of nature. Uh, that, so from the mental and physical. So, from the mind, from the, from the idea, you know, putting into action, we tend to affect our concrete world which we live in, okay, and, uh, and concrete, you know, situations. And what I'm saying is that a lot of situations aren't even real. It's uh, what we think of. People get, people, let's say, for example, who start petty arguments with each other about silly things. It could even be a couple at home. You know, someone says something and the other person might say something and it starts off an argument and it's actually about nothing. They're just talking about something which could be or if or blah 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 possible and then they're seeing it from different points of view and they're, when you're always expecting that there to be a right and a wrong uh, you know and then the other person should try to see it from your right or wrong when there's actually no right or wrong if you were in no existence you know, if you were two rocks, then where would be the right and wrong? You know what I mean? It's only because you feel hungry and, you know, through your greed, jealous, jealousy or true physical hunger that when you see somebody else eat, eat your breakfast or which you claimed or to believe that was actually yours or whatever reason, you know, because they are connecting this and emotion then suddenly you get angry because somebody ate your breakfast. You see what I mean? Thinking that, or so and so is earning more money than you, or so and so thinks this of you or that. So from the from the comfort of actually being born into this world, just like a chicken and an egg, where you know we we, we you know we our minds develop and scatter in a in a jumbled up complex way of um of a, of a, a thing you know of, of a being. <clears throat> and um, it can waste a lot of time, but seriously, thinking and thinking and thinking, you know, um, it was once said by um, Jock Fresco, I'm a big fan of Jock Fresco, okay, 
Um, he once said, um, you know, a great thinker, he, he, you either like him or you don't, but he um, once, you know, as he said that, he said, human beings will never become educated as such. You know, you'll never come to that point, your learning's ongoing. And um, I, too, I'm like that. I always think about like, the beginning of like the Big Bang and the universe. What on earth are people talking about? Which I'm going to get on into in a minute. I mean, it's, there's got to be something beyond the universe, right? If you could fly on through the universe, through time, through space, would you ever get to the end? No? Okay, so all of this is inside what? It's, it's unthinkable, yeah? Everything, you know... Uh, as they said, it, it, it's, it's expanded out from nothing. But from that nothing then, what was that? So, no matter how small, 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 or how massive the universe, when you're talking about something that never ends, isn't that unbelievable? What's behind, what's beyond that? And even if it, it is nothing, then what's, what about that nothing? Isn't there a, a boundary for that? Uh, it's like you, you'd come to, an, uh, if you'd fall off a ledge, or you'd fly and hit a wall, let's say, then what's behind the wall? Or let's say that wall is the end, and it's absolutely solid, it's very, very thick, it's eternally thick, if you like. Now, that eternalness, in, in what is that contained? So the universe is absolutely amazing. It seems almost in, incredible. Our lives, we're so... Um, not only are we lucky to be human beings and have our brains for advanced, you know, thinking our minds and bodies, but it's like, uh, other, you know, we're the top, you know, um, compared to other animals, but it's like, uh, it's like, um, it's uh, not only is it amazing that we have lives and minds, uh, the magic of it all, but it's also incredible how the whole universe and everything, as I say, everything and nothing and all of it has been created. Uh, so I love to study the, the Chinese philosophy, like uh, the yin and yang, yin yang concepts that you find in martial arts and things like that. But science too, and I'm going to get onto another topic in a moment. Okay, we've got like this is all really one topic, really, but this is very, very um, deep and very relevant. I feel, and I feel this can get a lot of people talking. Okay, and unless this, this communicate. Okay, now I'm not forcing my beliefs out there. Okay, I'm just saying it, it is what it is. Myself, I don't have a religion as such. But um, I don't want to say that I'm an absolute um, atheist, is it? Uh, but I believe an atheist is someone who does not believe in, let's say, a god or a religion of any sort of follow that as though. Um, then you, um, but it's like um, I've been watching a, a lot of document, uh, a lot of debates and um, documentaries by the great um, scientist and um, atheist a guy, the guy I'm called uh, Richard, my name, his name is uh, Richard Dawkins, if you'll know Richard Dawkins. Um, I think he's a great thinker and a great scientist and um, he has had a lot of debates with various religious people and people who, um, and, and doctors and, and people in different fields where they're more on the spiritual side of believing or like um, divine uh, or, or higher creators such as a god and things like that okay and um, a lot of people believe that uh, a lot of religious people believe that everything in the world is so perfectly designed that that um, it could it couldn't possibly be just a, a natural accident a natural phenomena and a science to have all the answers now, let me just answer your question quickly before we move on. I'll just answer the question quickly of what came first, the chicken or the egg, in my point of view, okay? Uh, uh, to me, it's like this. The problem, as I say, is humans are always trying to separate this and that, understand the Big Bang and uh, the universe and unbelievable things, you know. But it's not only that, they're just trying to... Um, you know, understand the difference between, it's like, un it's like trying to understand the difference between, uh, you know what I mean, um, what can I say, like, um, like you, you, the people like looking at a, t a computer and a mic, I'm looking at my computer here and a microwave there, you know, it could be, a, you know, people just see things in, in the world they make, I'm not saying people made chickens, I'm just trying to say, 
people see things around them, even, even in the physical world that they create, which is actually unnatural, but it still comes from the naturalness, which is us and our natural minds that have the idea to build buildings, computers and car and technology, uh, which is all unnatural, but it's coming from our us, which we are natural beings from our minds, and we make things okay, from the natural resources that didn't come from space, but they came from the very earth. You know, like wood we use to carve tables and make paper and things like that, okay? But then again, even if you did get it from the moon or somewhere out in the universe or any other universes beyond that, isn't that all of reality? I'm a big fan of my favourite book, okay, is the um, Tao Te Ching, okay, Tao Te Ching by um, Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher, and it talks about the yin and yang, yin yang, and the actual Tao, which is the way, the eternal everything. It's not a religious thing as such, but it's saying that. Um, Basically, the, he says that the eternal Tao is not the one that can be put into words. That's fake. It means the truth, basically. The ultimate truth is, you know, it can't be put into words. If you were to put out the answer and say, well, this is the um, answer. This is what everything is in the universe. You know, I've heard so many um, astrologists, was it, uh, scientists, uh, scientists and people like that saying, well, we don't know everything yet. Maybe one day we'll get there, and to me that's just unthinkable, it's just absolutely unbelievable to actually think that, as a whole human race even, to infinity, how could we ever possibly know everything, or at least even begin to understand the workings, or some something about the workings, you could even say, of it all and anything. The thing is, no matter how we study, we're always studying, no matter how we evolve, no matter how we develop and how our thinking evolves and develops, no matter how all of our thinking, our planning, our study, our um, writings, no matter how science and study in any form of life and natural of phenomena as we know phenomena, the only, you know, the only thing we're doing is studying from a human point of view and that's all we'll ever be able to do, even when we try to study from, from another point of view, that is still trying to study from a point of view. You're not studying from something without a point of view. And when you are studying something, uh, trying to study the world, what is there, let's say, in the world, or a small scale, or let's just say the world, or the stars, for as far as we can see, <coughs> that is also our point of view. There's no escaping the human element of what we are. There's no way we can look at things in a way that we're not doing it in a human way. So whatever possibilities there are, no matter how natural we can be, you can't leave the truth. It's the same as you can't leave the truth and separate yourself from the truth. And yin and yang, and yin and yang, as I say, and all of this. The yin and yang, by the way, if anybody that doesn't understand, it's, it's, the, it's the truths about balance in the world, where there's like, you know, up, down, uh, hard, soft, man, woman, hot, cold, and everything, light, dark, you know, heavy, light, you know, these two, you know, front, back, left, right, you can't separate them, it's just that. But one thing you can do is say that uh, the ultimate thing to every single opposite, the only thing you do have is like you've got everything and nothing. As I, I used to say, when I, I used to make my life philosophy series before, and this is the new form of the philosophy series here, okay, um, the truth debate, okay, um, um, it's... You know, I used to say everything is nothing and nothing is everything, and that where it's like basically it's the true meaning of yin and yang and the Tao itself. You know, and just like um, Lao Tzu was saying in his book, uh, uh, Tao Te Ching, as I say, you can download it, there's a lot of free downloads and stuff online too of the great book. Um, uh, it, he, he was um, saying, and to me, it is, I was saying the same thing, it's like, if, you know, you, we're so complicated in our lives, you'll have one hand. And you'll say, okay, what's the opposite of this hand? You say, oh, my right hand, or it's my left hand, definitely. You see what I mean, yeah? Or, um, what's the opposite of a smile? It's like a, a, an angry face, you know what I mean? Or, like, what's the opposite of this hand here? Oh, it's putting it this way. Or, show me something different. How about two fingers? How about four fingers? And it becomes complicated. You know, the opposite of this hand, you could say, is like, no hand, nothing. So, the, the true opposite of everything, of everything, that's, when I say everything, I mean every solid thing, okay, 
that you can see and feel with our senses and also everything as in every idea even in our minds because that's still electrical signals and part of our mind until we're talking on a scientific level or a spiritual level if you want to say it as that that is still part of the whole everything you know and the only opposite to everything is nothing which as being as an opposite of, of the two halves of yin and yang which everything must have two halves that nothing also is still something by all means because if it wasn't there if there was no nothing then there would be no everything aside and that would also become nothing you see so there's everything and nothing in everything it's like the same way that there's good and bad in life always you're always going to get bad some pressures in life and trouble so it's good and bad always so we study from both to learn and learning is good as long as, and it depends what you learn and how you use it as I said before knowledge is power but it's how you use it it's like a tool you know but um, how to use it or how to live a better perfect life and make a more peaceful world and do right that is another deep uh, topic that people people sadly because they're too greedy and because they're natural it seems natural or and um, we develop certain habits, like the way the world's getting now with technology, and everybody wants, everyone wants whatever they want now, fast food, whatever, you know. That takes over, and the desire for, and then whatever we want, because we're like the smartest animals and such, we've got like, um, it's like our downfall in a way, because we because our greed is letting us down, and it leads us to, you know, fighting, war, and death, you know, and, and killing, and, you know, and, an unpleasant life and um, there's just not enough it seems like it seems like there's not enough in the world for every, for, to go around for everybody in terms of better life now a lot of people will believe that that's money I'm sorry I still have not answered your question on the, the, the chicken and the egg yet I'm going to get around to that in a moment but it's like it's like that you know uh, so they forget the actual true you know basic, you know, like let's say the ancient tribes, let's say for example in ancient times just living in the forests, literally going fishing for the fish, you know, and, and hunting and things like that, but there was still greed and um, jealousy and things like that back then among tribe members and family members and whoever, it's just, it's just in us, and in nature, and you find it in animals too and again, you know, it's the same way that animals would be fighting like, um, each other for like a a mate or hunting, you know, whatever. So it's the same thing, okay? Uh, people, they will be fighting no matter what, it seems. And, um, so anyway, as I was saying, okay, you've got, it's like, it's like two, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, two, right, two rights don't make a wrong, you could say. But then uh, again, you see what I'm saying? It's like, uh, you could say they do. The opposite, it depends how you look at things, but it's like, you, you know, there's two sides to everything, and that's what I'm trying to say. Now, it's like, the question has an answer, the answer has a question. It just infinitely keeps going, okay? And that's what it is. But it's the way you see things, as I said before. It's like a bottle of water. A bottle of water that's like half full, and yet half empty. When you say that bottle is half full or half empty, it depends on you and how you see it. You might be out in a desert, and you say, oh, you know, it's, or, or the way in the situation, or so and so has been drinking it, oh, it's half empty. You know, it's half full. Or it's, if you needed an, an empty bottle at that time and it was filled up with water, you might say, well, it, it, it's, you know, it's empty. It's empty of space. It's filled with uselessness, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but if it was, if you, if you, you know, in that way, but if it was like, empty you would say it's empty you know i need water because you want water you're thirsty but if it was full you'd say it's full but you might say it's full of uselessness you know that way so so the full the empty to whichever degree i'm talking about your whole life and everything in your life is that the problem with people is they're so complicated as i said before you might be sitting in a room and there's a window on one side of the room and um you know you might say to yourself well I don't like that window over there, or that door, or what it is over there, I don't like it. And you might knock the whole wall down and rebuild the house so that the window's on the other side. You'll exhaust yourself and waste a lot of time and energy. 
whereas the only thing you had to do was just turn yourself around to face the other angle so that the window would be on your other side. You just change your position, your perspective of, of things. It's not that which is controlling you as such. But then again, it could be a problem that you see as a problem where it's not such a big problem at all. But you could come to some reason in your mind that, that it's led you, or you've led yourself You've, you've led yourself to believe that other people have led you to believe or, or, or not and you've come to a point where you believe something to be so important and you either start working to alter yourself either on the simple or the complex or as I said, alter the place and the situation and you're just overworking and you're working your energy blindly and wasting your energy blindly and the martial arts come through, okay we're talking about you know, not wasting your energy and using and going in the flow of nature. But it's very hard to go in the flow of anything if you don't understand it. So to go in the flow of, of the universe, we need to understand it. To live a better life, we need to understand it. Yes, we need to understand. So studying our origins as far back as we can and looking ahead for possibilities as far on as we can. But they say to know the path forward, study those coming back, right? Of ahead. So you're, you're in that, you're studying that. People that have been there throughout older generations and then, the, and then uh, studying our, part, you know, um, our past, you see, and so on. Uh, that, okay. But what I'm trying to say, okay, is, and it, again, things like, um, you know, if you look at the whole willow tree, let's say, and you look at how it's leaning over, you would know that before there was water there. But this is based on experience and things like that. If you never knew about that, you would never know. You might say that you need schools and a teacher to explain that to you. But um, if you were to actually experience something like that for yourself, then you wouldn't need a school, would you, to actually know that? So, is it the schools, the problem in the schools, in the hospitals, in, in the politics, in, in, in the world we live in? Or is the problem in our lack of experience and, um, you know, to certain things? Or is it that we are experienced and exposed, I should say, to certain things that we just don't see? Or is it the way that we're seeing things that is, in effect, affecting the way we think, thus, the, and developing ourselves and then the way we do. And um, people change over the years, and it's so deep, it's just a very deep talk. What I'm going to say to you is now, and let me tell you the reason, in my mind, why, uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg, as a possible possibility, I'd say, not the answer. Sorry. I think it's like this, and you've got to think about this, okay? Where would an egg come from? Okay? Now that's actually another interesting talk, actually, okay? Where would an egg come from? What's more, what's more likely, let's put it that way, okay? An, an egg forming, okay, usually if you study, you will see that in animals, there are different kinds of um, breed, different kinds of um, birth, let's say, given, okay, from animals and living things. They're, they're usually just an offspring as in just giving birth to the actual animal, the mother gives birth to the animal, like, like we are, you know. Or, there's this giving birth where it's an egg, and it comes out in the form of an egg. Even, um, you know, um, even animals such as humans and other animals which don't come out in an egg, we still come from you know, the water and the mother's body inside, if I'm not too up and knowledgeable on the, on the terminology of it all. But it's still that, okay? Now, if you're talking about flowers and plants and things like that and other organisms, it's the same thing. It comes from some form, there's some connection. It's not just like the mother organism's there and then there's nothing between them and it just puts out, magically puts out a baby. It's the development within the mother's you know, womb and then developing, okay? And all of that. It's the same with plants, as I was saying, and things like that, where it just comes from the seeds or growing from there. You know, and, and, and in the shape of like fruit or seeds and things, just come, it still comes from the thing, but it's all one thing. It's the same way as the whole growing process is, the root growing up from a tree up uh, to the branches and then the actual leaves and the things growing on them, it's all one thing. You don't just say, this is a tree and these are the leaves, it's as though they've been stuck on with sellotape. It's not like that at all, okay? Or there's the sky in, in the universe, you know, um, and the people, uh, the stars are put there as such, and that's not the way to look at it as, as such. It amazes me when I see people online, uh, when I see the news um, and things like every every day, often talking about new findings in the universe and of astrology, saying oh they've found another planet with an unbelievable um, 
such an amazing mass of size or, or things such as oh it's got so many moons or it's like um, we can be interested in them, you know be um, um, intrigued by all of this uh, by all means definitely because that's what where we are that's our nature as human beings and, and the way we think but but um, you know, it's I find I find it so amazing and funny the way you know we we all, we're always finding new things out about you know astrology and saying oh somewhere out there in the stars there's like another planet with a an unbelievably strange or unique they they will find words such as strange or unique you know to us to our human way of thinking um, um, what do you call it a uh, um, planet with a, an unbelievable atmosphere, it's not a liquid, it's not a gas, it's not this one, is it, you know, and whereas like, we only know liquid, gas, and, uh, you know, um, solid, and it's like, um, people are always looking for that solid, you know, or the, looking for answers within what we already have, and, whereas at this, and using that as a base to look for other, more answers, because we don't have anything else, and then there's other people on the other side making up, or just coming up with um, ideas such as like, um, different kinds of heavens, beliefs, religious or spiritual beliefs and things like that, superstition or like UFOs, you know uh, or, or there being living beings on other planets that look like us or not or like um, creatures and things because the world, the universe is so big so that why would there not be? or when somebody dies the spirit comes out and things so they're thinking about, there's a lot of superstitious belief too so there are things like looking beyond what we can't explain and then um, in regards to certain experiences that people may have or what is true or not you know, people have different beliefs and for me, I don't know until I see something even when I see a human being standing in front of me talking to me I can't be 100% sure that that is a human being and another thing is, how do you categorise that? because all human beings are slightly different you know, I mean, in terms of the DNA, the blood and everything, I could well and truly say that that is a different creature to me, <laughs> to me, and also I cannot even say that I am one solid creature, because I've got so many organisms dying every day, new ones coming in constantly, you know, leaving their marks in my mind, in my brain, and everything, the blood cells replacing themselves, and over time anyway, it's just as we see things solid as they are, this is me and who I am, and I know, um, this is my hand, it is eternal, you know, it will last forever or until I die. This is a house, when actually it's you know, stone and things we've used to build up and make the shape of a house. You see, for something for us to cover shields with, because we feel uncomfortable when we're outside in the cold, soaking in the rain, so we need to build a house for ourselves. You know, a burger, kids no beef burgers, you know, the hamburgers, you know, for um, you know, fast food, but then, or ice cream, but they never, until later on in the study, they, they would never probably, there's so many kids who don't know where it comes from, they just know a burger's a burger, they don't know where the, where the meat, the bun, uh, where it actually comes from, you know what I mean? So, nature again. Now what I'm trying to say is, time, all science and study of that is great, but what I'm trying to say is science, <coughs> science is the study of the things we, of the truth, ultimately, that's what it should be. It shouldn't be like science and superstition, okay? And um, beliefs and two things debating in such a way. That's just human beings debating with their different limited ways of thinking and limited scale of, of communication capability through language. Uh, we're still very primitive on that way, you could say. If you could look at somebody and they look at you and just know straight away about ten times the amount of topics that could be talked upon before you even begin talking about one, then you'd be you'd be you'd be more faster, you'd be, you'd be more able. You see what I'm saying? It's like a computer that can act and do like uh, the the tasks of multiple computers. Like a supercomputer would be amazing, rather than, compared to these simple little single computers, like, as we are, excuse me, sim single human beings, as I say. Um, so when things are connected, things start to make sense, right? Uh, going back again, and, um, so the theory of relativity and all that, you know, but it's like you look at the whole universe and everything, including time, space, and uh, at least everything as we can see it, and also as we as we don't know beyond our, um, what we know and think we know. Also, such as 
you know, um, all of it, okay, um, the earth we're standing on, the air, the water, and everything that goes right up into the sky that goes beyond the earth's atmosphere out into space and the gravity, the, um, what can I call it, the whole fabric of space and time itself connected to the stars. It's not as such that like, the space is nothing. So again, back to the basic thing, you know, that's the sky up there, or that space. It's nothing, but you can't say it's there. You can't say it is not there, okay? It is there. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, uh, I'm not just being philosophical, such as there's a space on this chair, the space is nothing, but it is something. Because there is, because there is a space, I can sit there. I don't mean only that, which is true too, but what I mean is um, it, it is actually something. I believe that not all fabric is something that we can feel. You feel like you're not in water now, yes? You're sitting here and you're in nothing, apart from the oxygen. But you say, apart from the oxygen and the air molecules around you, you say, apart from that, if you were inside a vacuum, not that you could breathe and live, of course, you're a living organism as we are, animals, but if you're sitting in this room and you say, there's nothing around my arm now here, there's nothing around my body, it's just a space, an empty space, okay? I'm not in water, apart from the oxygen and the air I'm saying, apart from that there's nothing. That could also be mis misleading. The different, um, as I said, the fabric of space and time itself. But it's like, the more deeper you go, the more you go beyond like, what we don't understand already in science, it's like, you're saying, well that's far-fetched. But what I'm saying, what is far-fetched, what can seem to be far-fetched, and, and I very much understand Richard Dawkins, is when he's saying like, you know, he hasn't seen, he has not seen a god or anything like that on a religious level. So, how could um, it's very hard to imagine that something so complex like a creator would be, or anything that, that beyond to actually create us as beings in this world that have such ideas about other distant galaxies with other alien beings looking like us and and um, all of our um, daily life troubles we have and go through in life and our emotions and thoughts. How could there be um, a God that would create everything so perfectly? And he explains, you know, um, uh, how, where would he come from, and what's beyond him, and, and his creator, and everything, and all those questions, which are amazing. And he's, and he, he's um, discussed this and debated this with certain other religious uh, believers and, 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 and spiritual um, people, and what do you call uh, supernatural, uh, superstitious people, and all of that as well. Um, uh, again, going on the, on the um, emotional side of people too, and again, people like um, Derek Akora, which I'm a big fan of for many reasons. I think he's a fun guy, but he's a very smart guy too, but whatever. Uh, the people talking about that, people that can read your fortune and all things like this, and your, and your life and all that, you know, and, and beliefs and tell you, um, you know, what will be and, uh, uh, in your future or what's going on. And, and, and super early uh, mediums and things like that, you know, and they're saying how people can also play, and there's some people that are fake and, uh, and they go reading off people's and what they say, the language and body language and mind games and things like that, and the language is given, smart people, but we're not talking about that. This is where I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, as I say, Laozi, as I say, of the Dao De Jin, my face called a book in, in, in Chinese, as I say. I'm a fan of him. I'm not a big fan of Confucius. I believe it's a concert in Chinese again, because Confucius, I feel, is more on the psychology, is more on the um, psychological side of philosophy, where um, it's telling you to how to fit in with a certain human set of standards on a certain like a group for the um, political or like um, the society level, how to work. But work well with your fellow men and um, uh, work hard to earn, earn money and study hard and all of this, you know, to fit into a certain um, standard or a certain, you know, society in a way. Whereas um, Lao I say, is talking about the actual truth beyond humans, the actual what is. And, you know, again, Richard Dawkins was talking about the science and all of that, you know, studying the molecules, the cells and everything, where everything comes from and expands and grows out in the universe. That is more realistic and that's more something ground that we can study. But for me, it's like I'm a philosopher and I'm more open-minded and positive and I know that human beings don't know everything. And we never will. So there's always something beyond that. There's always more things we don't know. Everything could have been designed by a creator. This whole world could have been perfectly designed. People look at things to be perfectly designed. A lot of people will say, like, you know, look how well the world's been designed, you know, the trees, everything, you know, 
the life, you know, human beings, um, how could it not be designed, you know, by something, a greater mind, you know, that is the same way as you might look at, co- at a computer or an aeroplane if you were less in the know, or look at anything, okay, in, um, you know, this computer here, the microwave, and you might say, wow, look how well that's been designed, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's from our point of view, because we are speaking from a point of view, we're thinking from a point of view that humans, because uh, we are, we create things, and so do a lot of natural animals, fair enough, they do design their homes, but it's not, sometimes it's not like a, a thought, when they're not thinking like humans, the design thing, how to design it as such, because it looks good or works efficiently, they just do things the way they are, and that's the way that we often do things the way we are due to our nature, and that's the nature of all animals and living things, but in a scientific point of view, but then a lot of like, religious people will say, no, well that's just ignorance, you know, um, that things are just the way they are, there's no, it's just random, there's no, people just develop the way they are, and, and um, you know, there's no actual um, intent behind anything at all, that's just ridiculous. Um, and there must be something beyond now. What I'm saying is there could be something beyond that's created the whole world and universe, and if there is a God, by all means, great, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it, it necessarily looks like um, <coughs> an old, a big man or a, some kind of a living being that like you might imagine in your mind, or something like that, okay? Like, or like um, uh, like the aliens, you know, you might think of a little green men, you know, but it might not be like that. It might be some kind of small cell or something, you know, another organized organism that you can't imagine. So, we... Our imaginations play and work a lot of the time for things we can't understand, but it doesn't mean that there isn't things beyond that, and it doesn't mean that life is not amazing, at least to us as we see it. And um, Most people um, are living, that's all we know, so I think we like to live more than to die, right? But we um, are smart and we, have, we come up with all different kinds of beliefs of what's right and wrong and ideas and ways of communicating with our fellow men and um, how to... Um, how to live, and it ends up being this um, a, a more tough time, more than more than a, a more than a necessary, I believe, a lot of the time, an exhausting time for us, when it could be more naturally easier. You know, you're always going to have pressures and challenges in life that make you stronger. Remember that. Uh, if you don't go through them, you won't come out stronger. But anyway, going back to what I was saying, like the chicken and the egg. Yeah, I don't know what I saying. Excuse me. Yeah, basically, the chicken and the egg. I believe. That I was saying, the egg is the process, it's part of that. It's, you could well and truly say, when you're born, you're still a part of your mother, right? And your father, because when you're born, you, you come out, you are those cells, that DNA, that blood, and everything. The egg is the egg of the chicken, it's just, I'm not saying I was born from an egg, Nanu Nanu, Robin Williams, whatever, um, you know, <laughs> when he, uh, uh, Mork and Mindy, I loved that old show before, classic when I was growing up. Before, but, um, the egg of a chicken is like, or a bird, is like, it's part of that mother's body, I believe, and it just comes out, it's part of the mother, and it's part of the child, the chicken, and it comes out, and it leaves behind that, just the same way as you would leave your hair, or your, or your milk teeth, your baby teeth, you know, and things like that, or like the umbilical, umbilical cord, if it's called, they are really connected to your mother as a baby, things like that, okay, you wouldn't say, what came first, that, or the baby, I believe that, <coughs> you know, they argue, as I was saying, there's two different arguments, you can, you would, what, what, what would be more believable, at least, what would be more believable, that an egg suddenly formed, some, where can you imagine an egg forming, under the sea, or on the, gra- on the grass, somewhere in a forest, just growing, growing from a plant, or some kind of tree, and then, it, and, the, and the egg drops from that, and hatches, or growing on some kind of natural, on a rock somewhere, like a fungus, or an egg, and it hatches and a bird comes out, I find that less likely to believe. I, I would rather believe that a bird would have came born of another animal as such, or another mating or breeding of like crossbreed, there's so many crossbreeds, a natural phenomenon, and scientifically, see, so a bird coming from another bird, or another animal, and um, during the po- process, it's like, where did the egg come from? This is a question, isn't it? You want to know where the chicken came from, where did the egg come from? It, maybe it wasn't always an egg. It just developed over, over time with mating between animals and um, things like that. And then, whereas a certain plasm or a certain, the inside, you know, the, the mother, the womb, whatever, 
you know, um, developed an egg over top of that, that shell and such. Maybe it was like this liquid form and then slightly thicker and things like that. Um, it could have even become, it could have even taken traits down from over the years. It could have come like um, an accidental thing where, or some kind of, where, um, and it would come on and that um, ended up becoming hereditary through through natural phenomena and uh, to them the, and the and the, it went down through generation after generation and they all had eggs. So the first bird could have come from that one mother, let's say, that I'm not just saying one day, it could have come the same way as human beings would develop like from apes, they say, even if it was to be you know, from a gradual process, but like birds also developing everything is a gradual process over the years, so some were like being born in some kind of plasm and then some in uh, another lighter, very soft skin, kind of like an egg, maybe somewhere in a harder one, and then, or maybe even the other way around where some birds or some, or some other animal, let's say, you know, developed, which were not airbound, you know, them, and uh, went a different way where they didn't have eggs. But you see what I'm saying? Well, that shell, how that shell actually developed over time or within certain species or, uh, or over time, you know, um, derivatives of that, you know, and um, over the years or within that one mother bird, whatever, and um, just came out. It could even be the fact that it could have been an accident, like I said, another possibility. All of what I just said, there is one possibility I'm thinking. Another one could be, as I say, a one where the bird that particular one was born in some, however they were born, with or without the egg, but it could have been born some way where they were there, and however that egg came into being, okay, it was, and it, 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 you know, and and, um, it's hereditary, that bird then was born, and and when it um, mated another bird of either the same kind or another kind, that passed on, that gene, that the, the next one, so the next mother would have a baby also, which would come from an egg. So, I'm just saying, I believe that the egg wasn't always there, the egg developed somewhere or another from that, the same way as all animals come from a beginning, you know. So you could say that the um, the first birds, where, where did they come from, you know what I mean? Did they all come from eggs? You see what I'm saying? I would rather believe that the first birds did not come from eggs than they did. Because where did those eggs come from? Grow from trees? From what? Okay. Um, or as I say, it would be complicated again as a human being's way of point of view. It could have been another animal, not a flying animal, but an animal that um, laid an egg. And that baby was, you know, had things like wings or just, or which resembled wings, maybe the wings developed over time, things like that. So it's a scientific, um, natural process of development, I believe, but how that come to being. I don't believe that there was always egg, just magically an egg was there, you know, on, on a stone or in the sea or growing from a tree or on the grass. How could that be? It had to come from another living animal, okay? Um, so if, if people are going to argue and say, okay, then well, how about a chicken? You know, <laughs> you know then, you know, you've got to, it goes back on again and again and again, you know? It's the same thing, where would that chicken come from? I would, you know, the chicken is, is that all life comes from the cells. Not all cells and things like that came from eggs. But you might look at it under a microscope, all of that is in a nucleus, and then you might say, that's a kind of cell. It's not saying like the plasma, the softness, and the tissue, and then it goes harder, and things like that. And the process is like moths, you know, and um, caterpillars, you know, or what do you call butterfly or whatever, where they go into the cocoon and then they come out as this butterfly. If you didn't know about that, you, if you didn't know about the caterpillar, you might say, okay, well, where did the moth come from? You know, where did he come from? Did it come? Was it was it was it the moth or was it the cocoon? You know, because the cocoon's a kind of shell, let's say. But you're forgetting all about the thing before that, which was a caterpillar, you never imagined, never even imagined that. And ever, all the life that had come from before, it's all come from somewhere, it's come from that, they say that, from the sea creatures first of all, and the smallest little, um, you know, living organisms known to man, you know, at least, from, from uh, liquid, you know, so, 
as developed over time, I think it goes much beyond what comes first, the chicken or the egg. That's just too ridiculous, okay? Uh, the eggshell, which we were talking about, don't forget, yeah? Um, the eggshell, obviously, I believe, is part, it definitely came from a living organism. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Where did life come from? It all come from the earth. That's what it really is not about. The chicken come from the egg, and the egg come from the chicken. The egg is a process between, it's like a com connection between the mother and the child, it's part of the body, and all of that. That's what it really is, and it's all one thing. In fact, the whole question is not even something to be thought about. It's just our simple mind trying to work things out. Uh, you know, <laughs> really, isn't it? We know chicken, we know eggs, we know the egg shell, we know the mother, oh, we're the one, two, and what come first, and we just, you know, you're trying to work things out, you know, in, inside or outside this house, you know, you just, what's two sides of either, either side of the wall, when there's a more wall in between you, you know, but it's just the way that that wall was built, you're not, there's nothing really, it's not really two sides, it's just how you are seeing something and your position towards it. And, then, uh, and your position alters your effect of your mind and what you see and you don't understand the way you're thinking as a human being and a lot of people like that, most people like this. So, that's that. Now going back to what I was saying, one more thing, one thing I'll say in this episode then, concluding that, clearing that, clearing that shit up there, excuse my language, um, about, about believing, as I say, all truth is what you believe and you know, if you believe something it will be true. Life. And um, I believe science is the study of everything, as in, but you will never get there. You know, it's like, it's like if there is a God or a heaven and everything, and as, as we've talked about here, beyond, forever and never, before, before, forever and never began, what was there? Everything and nothing, probably, right? And that's two sides of the same thing, <coughs> always changing, always mixing up the different percentages. And what is, what is after forever and never to? It's just unthinkable. Infinite thinking. You can't end up with, if there's nothing, what's that? You know? If there's forever, where does that end? You know, and things like that. So in time and space and all of this, we, no matter how deep our understanding of science and space goes and, and all of that, philosophy is just the way, the way of thinking. Psychology is trying to understand other human beings or read such organisms when we're all totally different. The mind is an, is an amazing thing, it's unbelievable that we can actually think and you know, have dreams and things like that, but uh, it can be just looked at as a very complex muscle, the brain, you know, muscles and that, and with um, electrodes and all that, and all that, but to actually be able to think, you know, and, and things like that is a very, very an amazing thing. And um, that is hard to say, but a lot of things in which work, the mind could be one of those things. It's like almost, if you can't understand the human mind, how will you understand the whole universe? But what I'm trying to say is, all of this whole thing, life, the universe, God, all of this one thing, I mean, God might not be a person, it could be the whole, this whole truth that it is. Isn't it you're all just amazing? Even if you say, Beyond that, even if you say, well, you know, God made the universe, even if created a Big Bang. Let's say he made the, this, uni this universe with all of its stars and planets, okay? It could be like one little beautiful thing. It could even be inside like a bottle on the shelf in God's house, let's say. And there's another bottle there, and it's another solution, a red one and a blue one, and then a different kind of universe is within that. Our whole universe could be as small as the smallest little micro, you know, speck. What do you call it? A uh, um, cell of anything. You know, well, what's beyond that? And what's beyond that kitchen made up of what? And what's beyond that? And what goes? How does it just? You know, when does it end? The, you know, it's like those um, little um, dolls you get, a little small one within a big one, and then a slightly bigger one, and a slightly bigger one within within the layers of the onion, it's like, when, the, when you get to the end of the layers of the onion, you get to what? You know, what's beyond that? You say, nothing? Well, where is the onion? Well, it's in this room, you know, or it's in the world. It doesn't stop there, does it? There's oxygen, it goes up, if you talk, you know, if you're talking about solid, liquid, gas, or beyond, or whatever else, possibility, it's unbelievable. And then out to the space, the gravity, and the wall. You know, it just where did it all come from? We're studying this complex world as we see it, the same way that 
little ants would study their grounds where they're studying their little habitat. So we can only study our habitat from, our, uh, from the minds we, we have and what we see. To study you further is unbelievable. We need to keep thinking possibilities in, in order to help us live a better life and be more effective as human beings and you know, think positively and um, open-mindedly. That's a good way to think. But regardless of if there is a God or not and a heaven and things like that, We'll see what happens, you know, but um, uh, just, I, I think we just need to live a moral life and try to live healthily, we're in tune with nature more, and be true and be realistic and logical the way we can, and live best to, to suit us as, hum, as a human race, rather than killing ourselves and each other, and um, study sciences and philosophy and everything, and try to make a better life in the real world, and um, save time and energy, and put it into good use, and do more of it. Our one life that we've given, we've been given. If there is such a thing as reincarnation, fair enough, see what happens, you know, and I hope we have more great life, because I feel life is a wonderful thing to be lived. But if there is a God, you know, and He can forgive us for whatever, if He is kind or whatever, you know, and understands that we are lower than Him or her or whatever, if He is the whole thing, then great, you know, and um, I am open minded to anything which could be, and there's so much more out there that I don't understand. And this magical thing, which is all of that, everything and nothing, and life itself, the simple, that's what I'm satisfied, happy enough, I've got this life, that is enough, and that's <coughs> magic enough to me to say that, not in the words, you might not say the words God as such, or whatever it might be, as a religious part, but what I'm trying to say is that is unexplainable, but it's unbelievable and so good and it's wonderful and that would be something I would indeed worship the whole being of all of this that my, no, not necessarily as an old man in the sky like Santa Claus you know like the God but, but something like wherever he is and I, I worship that and um, I know it's wonderful so anyway you know train hard and stay safe everybody thank you very much for watching okay it's okay my chair <laughs> I kind of heard some creak in there, I wonder what it was, you know, hold on, there's a door. You know when you get that superstitious feeling in you, it's okay, we're okay, okay? You're just expecting a couple of Martians to run around there with laser guns and blast my head off, right? Train hard and stay safe, as I say, in the martial arts, when you're training everybody, and it's about mind and body in this one life, okay? Life can be like a game of chess, but I remember it's us that make the chess boards, us that make the rules a lot of the time, and us that, um, Throughout this game of life, we do worry and are concerned with our previous steps, the space we're standing on, and where we're going, and the plans we're making ahead, and the things that can only be only be assumed um, and planned with possibilities of the future. When you play a game of chess, you're thinking about possibilities ahead and what how we deal with those things. Okay, but you can't waste. You know, you can't waste your life away worrying about what could and possibly might not, or what is or not. You can't be too, too stubborn when you're playing a game of chess, can you? So don't be stubborn in your life. Relax and have fun and play, and only the way you want to. Enjoy it. It should be a game. It should be fun. But live it seriously and enjoy your life. Go with the flow of nature, and um, know that everybody lives differently and respect all peoples, whatever being the individual being they are. We can't choose who we are, how we're born, from the mothers and fathers we have, uh, if you, you know, and, and the one body we have been given. Don't look at yourself as being limited to anything I say in life, or in any way at all, or others, or compare with others, it's no use, just use what you have. And if you have a chicken or egg for lunch, wow. If you kill the chicken, you're going to have no eggs, okay? Just remember the true thing, study what you have, and use what you have now, it's very realistic, okay? Don't go off the, off the charts reading this and that, and then you end up doing the wrong thing. You know, think logically about things, okay? But, um, you know, you can have eggs. Train on, stay safe, yeah? Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. More videos to come.